In episode five, we meet Mikkel Thomas, the owner of Philly Photo Spot, Philly's first selfie museum. We will talk to this visionary of how he has carved his way at a young 25 into this phenomenon of an industry of selfie culture. We'll learn about Mikkel, his journey, and helping entrepreneurs, influencers, families, professionals find their space to express their own unique identity. So get ready, get your sip, get your snack, and let's get ready for the visionary sip, Mikkel Thomas. Hello, sippers. Get ready for the set podcast where we sip, eat, talk, the ultimate blend of flavors and conversations. I'm Gina, your host, culinary enthusiast, and spirited conversationalist. Each episode, we'll explore diverse topics, share laughs, and savor the moment with special guests. Sip on insights, eat up knowledge, and join the conversation. Be sure to follow us on Instagram and YouTube at Sip, Eat, Talk Podcast. Subscribe now for a journey that's as delicious as it is insightful. Let's sip, eat, and talk together. Cheers. Hello, sippers. Welcome to the Set Podcast where we sip, eat, talk. I'm your host, Gina. If you are with us, you are a sipper. That's right. Whether you are drinking your favorite wine, cocktail, mocktail, energy drink, coffee, or tea, you are a sipper and you are part of our community. The audio podcast can be found on Spotify, Apple Podcasts, or Amazon Music. You can also check us out on YouTube at Sip Eat Talk Podcast and follow us on Instagram and TikTok at Sip Eat Talk Podcast. Well, you know, this is one of my favorite segments. It's time to sip in and let you guys know what I am eating and sipping on for this episode. Sippers, I want to know what are you sipping and eating on for the episode? So please be sure to tag me in your post on Instagram at Sip Eat Talk Podcast. And let me see those photos of what you are sipping and eating on. I have a small charcuterie board today that has strawberries, raspberries, blueberries, apricots, and dates. I am indulging in those because they pair very well with what I'm drinking today. Lived in California for a short time and I love Pete's Coffee. Pete's Coffee was one of my go-tos and so I still order it. So today I am enjoying some caramel flavored Pete's Coffee Espresso. I will include a link in the description. And so now let's get ready for our visionary sip and talk with Mikkel Thomas, owner of Philly Photos by Philly's first selfie museum. Thank you for joining us today for the visionary sip. We appreciate you. Thank you for having me. First, let me say this. When I tell you I am so impressed with you at your age and what you're doing, so it was really important to get you on and talk about uh, and share your share your journey with everyone. Tell me this. I noticed you're from West Philadelphia. Tell me about life for a uh, young Mikkel growing up in West Philly. Life for young Mikkel. It was good. I had a very good childhood. Uh, okay. My childhood was, you know how they say it take a village to raise somebody? I, I love was, that. I was that kid where I was at every cousin house, every friend house, <laughs> going to okay. church to everyone else. So I was just always around a bunch of family, friends. So I had a real nice childhood. Though. Okay. Did you have any examples of entrepreneurs within your family or close family, friends, or someone you know that now that you look back, you realize, even if you didn't realize it then, that you watch somebody in that space? Like a lot of people around like the neighborhood of older men had car shops or okay. like fixing cars on the block. Uh, my great, great grandma used to own a candy shop in North Philly. Oh. So that was always like a... But if my grandma and my mom used to always talk about that when I was younger. My grandma used to, and my mom used to own a candy shop. All the kids used to come around here and buy okay. little penny candies and stuff like that. So I used to always hear those stories. And then when I was young, my mom started her own business. So I got to see how she, um, like, ground, like, groundwork, like, from day one when she started to, like, now where she's, like, 12 years into doing it. Okay. I love to hear that it's been interwoven really within your family history, whether you recognized it then or not. So it seems like you had some really great examples, whether family or just uh, people within your village that you saw doing this. So that's, that's great to know. So give us the background of photography. Where did this interest in photography stem from? Interest in photography. Um, to be honest with you, I really don't know where it started from. Like I remember at an okay. early age, 
I always like playing with my grandmom's video cameras or camcorders and just like watching okay. like the home videos and just like looking at the old Polaroids. I don't know. It just always just caught my attention just playing with the camera. I never really okay. did nothing with it. Uh, in middle school, I used to make like little stop motion videos with like little Lego people and make them look like they actually move it. Um, I think that is definitely doing something with it. In middle school, yes, that's doing yeah. something with it. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, I was just making little small things I just liked. I just like little stop motion videos. So I was like, let me try to make some. So my bro, uncle bought me a camcorder and I would just take little pictures and have them move in different places. But I never really thought too much of it until I got to college and I had uh, comm classes where I actually had to make mini, make mini movies and um, make like little documentaries and actually write scripts with things. Was um, that your major in college? Um, it became my major. <laughs> well, it wasn't my first major. <laughs> so tell me the story behind that. Uh, my first major in college was a uh, biology slash pre dentistry, uh, and I had three point five. I was doing real good, and then I had okay. statistics and chemistry. Not yeah, chemistry, and I didn't know you could add molecules together. So that one kind of uh, <laughs> didn't work out for me. Okay. But luckily, at the time, I had a few comp classes, and I was like, I actually didn't do my comp classes. So once I really dove like dove deep into them, it was okay. like, oh, this is something I could really get into. And okay. it just kind of just built up from there. All right. Now, post college, when you make that make that transition um, uh, out into uh, the, the work for, was it anything connected to ph photography or within that realm? Um, so like after college, I kind of just did more like freelance work. So like people would book okay. for like parties and photo shoots and like graduation and small things like that. Or I would do like collabs with like other models that I worked with previously. Okay. So take me back then. When did, when did that moment happen where you knew photography is what you wanted to do professionally? What was that defining moment? Um, when I quit Target. <laughs> I used to work at... <laughs> that sounds like a good story. I'm ready for it. I'm ready. Yeah, it, it, was, it was good. <laughs> yeah, I was working at Target for two years and it just felt like, I don't know. It felt like I had no end. Like, it felt like I just, I had no life. It was like, I wake up, go here. Like, I still had a bunch of free time and I was still doing my own shoots on the side. But it felt like okay. I wasn't happy. Like, I just felt like I wasn't really going over it. So it was like, I felt like I was losing my dream. I was watching my other friends okay. do things and it was just like, okay, this isn't working right now. So I, during that time with me, like figuring out what I wanted to really do, um, I came up with Philly Photo Spot. And I didn't really do nothing. I just came up with the name. So I just bought the LLC. But the domain name was like, all right, I'm going to just figure something out. But I know I want this name for something. For something. Um, I like that. Sometimes I find along the road, I have a very, I'm trying to work on that in my older age. I have a very impulsive personality. I feel something. I don't know what it is, but I'm feeling it. And sometimes I, I move too fast. Like you said, you got that name and I'm like trying to figure out, make things work. But I like that you just, that's a takeaway I hope people take from that, that you were able to just sit in it for a moment. I know I want to do something with it. And so I'm going to move with this part of it and make sure I have the LLC, but it, it'll come along when I know exactly what I want to do. So I'm, I'm really impressed by that. I like, I like that. I like that you did that. I'm curious to know, given your age, the age of selfie culture and, and how things have come to be, were you always a social media user? Were you someone who loved social media because of your background in photography? What is that journey with you and, and selfie culture before you have Philly Photo Spot? I would say zero. I was not the big, I'm not a big picture taker like now I am, but before okay. I was like the, oh, everybody take a picture, I'll be over in the side. They're like, oh, I'll take the picture for y'all. Yeah. Yeah. I was never really like used to like selfie culture. It's really, it was like, I started noticing it in like Florida and Miami where like, oh, these little selfie museums and stuff for like different concerts and stuff. And I was like, those are nice. Why don't they have something like that here? Okay. And so at this time you have the Philly Photo Spot LLC. Outside of just thinking about it and mulling on it, what was the first step you took? Like, I think I want to do something with this. I want to open a space here in, in the Philadelphia area. First thing I did was I uh, actually shadow someone who actually owned something similar to uh, what I own in Maryland. So I friends of my mom. love that. Um, and they're, they're actually Blair Black owners, and I shadowed them for a while just to see how they ran theirs and just to see, like, the whole look of how they did it. Because I never saw okay, them. Okay. Um, so when I got to see theirs, I was like, oh. Cause at first I was thinking more like not like having it like on the street, like a storefront, like a normal just traditional brick and mortar. And I never okay. thought about even going into a mall. And then once I seen Arizona okay. in the mall, and I was like, oh, I didn't know that was even possible. And I was like, so I could put it. I love mall. this. I want to stay here for a second because 
and I don't really care what you're doing. I, I have a, a background and nonprofit. I've been in corporate America, even working with small businesses. One thing that I have learned over the years, I think sometimes we all want to stay in this small space of this is mine. But I like that you reached out to somebody you saw something was out there and that you took an approach of, hey, let me shadow, let me follow someone, let me learn about the business and do some things. And I think that's a really great gem to take away from here. Like reach out to people who are doing things that interest you or have some interest to you because it can be beneficial and payoffs for any of our listeners. What advice would you give them there? Like, what was your first step? What was your approach? Being black, you know, it's always the, the notion where it's like, we always cramped in a bucket where it's like, pull it down. Cause it's, we're not all like that. Right. We even reach out and get able to, you know, get something back was just like, you know, he didn't have, they didn't have to help me. Even though they were friends with my mom, they didn't have to tell me this stuff or show me how they right. did it. And they were, were it would really help me. If you're, like, you're not a see, you got to see a vision to, 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 to really see it. And it's yeah. like, I was actually able to see someone who actually had it, had it there for a year, for years. And it yeah. was just like, okay, I know this is possible to do. Yeah, it was like, okay. And I, like, I, I can do this. That's, that's how I felt yeah. to see it. It was like, okay, even though they're a lot older than me, a lot more established, like, I can still do this. Like, even though they showed me, it was like, I felt like I could do it, being able to see it see theirs how they did theirs i feel like I, can do. I like that i really do like that so now we know that you did some research first right then you did some shadowing of someone who was actually in the industry what are some other key factors that help you bring this vision to a reality definitely having a well i'll say having a well laid out plan and knowing what you want and what you want to get out of it. okay so not just like okay i want to do this but how you going to get to that i want to be rich but how you going to get rich have a way right. to, you know, a, a way to plan and, you know, have different bullet points of what areas you can target. Was that your plan when you were taking the vision for Philly Photo Spot to now this selfie museum? It was doing some research, seeing if there was a need, which is really important in business. I don't think people always do that. You want to see if there's a need, then you actually shadow someone yeah. to learn the inner workings of the business. What were some pivotal steps for you? And, and keeping uh, moving your vision uh, forward with the selfie museum. One was definitely, you know, we didn't have one at the time. What's another thing that I can bring to the Philly area where I can bring everything together? Okay, at the time of 2020, it was nothing but content. Everyone's at home making content, TikToks, Reels. Mm -hmm. How can I bring everyone in together, whether it's a photographer, model, um, everyday person who just want to take selfie, we just okay. want to have a party or something. And even families, I see you do a lot of families come in just to take their yearly family photo or, or holiday photo. Yeah. I feel like your business model speaks to whatever they need. If I'm a professional and I need some new headshots, you know, I feel like it speaks to all of that because the culture that we live in now, everything is visual. It's visual. People yeah. want to see, connect, they get inspired from it. They're entertained by it, whatever <laughs> the case may be. And so I, I think that you've done a really great job of helping center that anybody listening my age i grew up in the age when you went to glamour shop <laughs> send them all and they just kept pulling down a different background behind you <laughs> so it might be brown might be gray blue white and that was pretty much it this is this is very revolutionary and i like that you're moving along um with the time so when you made an actual step, like now I'm going to start looking for a place to actually opening your doors. Tell us some, a little bit about that journey and that process. It was definitely difficult and trying to find the right space um, in, the right, in the right areas. Um, until I found like the mall, like at first I was looking like on the street, just like different like warehouses and things like that, where I actually okay. had to build out everything. Okay. And then once I started looking at the malls, it was like, okay, this is a little more easier to manage versus me having to build an entire store. I got the bones okay. already there, and I just got to lay things out and build them down from there. So once I okay. able, like, was able to get inside the mall and see the mall part, it made it a little bit easier to visualize. Okay. I'm a visual person. Like when I build, like if I can see it visually by looking at the spot, I know what I can use and need to build this. So tell me about the moment you walk in Willow Grove Mall, you you see this spot. What What's going through your mind? Is it an um, automatic, like, this is it? Yeah, yeah. It's the first spot I had in the mall, I, I loved it immediately. Cause I it was, it was a, like a full like rectangle like box, but it was laid out perfectly of how I, I thought about how the store was. Like it was okay. all sides was open, the middle part was open, the, the front door as you come in, you see me, the front desk is right there. Like it was real nice how it set up. Okay. It was it was it was amazing. How much time passed between when you first saw the spot 
to you actually opening your doors? How long was that process for you? Say about, about two months. Yeah, it was some ups and downs. Um, okay. But it was it was good because it, it was a lot of work that needed to be done. Like, so it, it was a lot, but it, it, it came together very fast. I'll say that. So explain to me now, is this like at this point when you're doing this and, and it's two months when you're trying to open the doors or even when you were shopping for locations, are you a one-man show? Do you have a team? Like who's working with you? No, I'm not a one-man show. I'm only one person, so I can't paint this and paint 20 of our different backgrounds. So having all my friends come and help me. Or my mom, my stepdad, my little brothers and cousins, or even just like my friends and homies that come through, and okay. they will come paint, you know, come come paint ready. So they got the, the dirty clothes on. They come and paint <laughs> ready. The beat up sneakers. So they they really came and showed up and helped. So I want to explore that for a moment because you talked about being raised in that village aspect where all it takes a village and it seemed even as an adult and starting business, you were still rooted and centered in that, and so. I'm curious, what would you say to people? How important is it to have those strong relationships that people would be willing just to show up for free and give their, <laughs> their time? Yeah. Um, it, it's, words really can't explain it, to be honest with you. It's, it's, it's a blessing. It's a blessing to have some people who will take time out of their day, like you said, for free. At any time of the day, and come and move, you know, sixty pound sheets of drywall, mm -hmm. or be somewhere paying for who knows how long. Yeah, I, like I, I can't put a price on that. Like, it's, I don't really got nothing else to say. It's like it's, it's beautiful. I'm, I'm blessed. That's, that's truly what I can say. I am blessed to have the people I have in my life to drop things they want to do, and just like, yeah, we we gonna come help grow today. And that's just it's okay. amazing. So describe to our listeners when they come into uh, Philly Photo Spot, uh, that selfie museum, what are they coming into? What are they looking at? What are some of their options? What is a day in the life of a customer or visitor to the selfie museum? So Philly Photo Spot is a selfie museum with over 20 different backdrops, props, like I said, a photo studio, selling museum, and a party, it's an event space as well. So we do birthday parties, different types of events, paint and sips, princess tea parties, superhero pizza parties, you name it. As well as I do professional photography, headshots, human portraits, birthdays, maternity. If you name it, I shoot, I shoot everything. As well as okay. we do printing, editing. So it's just a, really a one-shop stop for all people. Free. No matter what you're doing. So I could come in as a content creator and influencer and I have options of different backgrounds. You have everything from just a, a, a plain color to the money room to the professional desk in the business setting. I see you have like the ABC room for the children or if you just want that beautiful, sexy couch. There's so many yeah. different options. I see you even have one for hairstylists. I love the one with the hairstylist and the dryers, it's like really dope. So you have a lot of options for just people who are content creators, but then we can also come in as just customers that want to have fun. I want to hang out with my girls or bring my niece and nephew. And we just want to take advantage of the different backgrounds and, and, and take our photos. That's something that could be done as well. So you don't have to be a professional photographer or even a professional, uh, influencer. You can just want to make some TikToks, make some reels and just some different creative backgrounds. Yeah, we got mm -hmm. a dress room, so you can have multiple outfits with you. Um, you got limited outfit changes, so you can really change a thousand different times in those okay. backgrounds to match any background you want. So it's usually a place you can have as much fun as you want. So you can bring outside props in with you. So you can bring like birthday okay. cakes, balloons, honestly, whatever else you can think of, you can bring it all with you and use it. I think this is just so revolutionary. I think it's so phenomenal. And so I'm curious to know how do you feel how are you in this space navigating this ever involving uh selfie culture are there some things that you have to stay open to is it ever evolving for you um yes yeah, it's, 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 it's evolving yeah, it changes every every while it's like it's like social media it changes up and down you never know when something's going to be cool like oh this selfie's cool or this selfie's not cool no more so it's just like okay you know you just gotta follow it and find stay on the trend to stay know when things are I about like to that. change and know when things are changing. Cause you don't want to be behind okay. and like, oh, it already changed and I just posted and did that. Or, you know, you want to be on top of it and be like, okay, I know this is about to be the next thing. Let me get this post out real quick. Cause I know this is about to move up. So just try okay. to know when to do things and try to stay on top of them.
the change. Which I think is just important in entrepreneurship generally, whether you're doing selfies or whether you have a, a restaurant or whether you're, you're business based or doing coaching, you have to stay up on what are the trends, whether it's a trend in communication, whether it's a trend in, you know, how food is served or whatever that is. I think that's yeah. a very important thing for entrepreneurs. Or I think just again, life in general as a person, it's very easy to get stagnated and stay in one place, but it's really important for us to just keep pushing forward and, and moving. And not that we have to get on brand with every trend, but I think just the the idea of being open to change is really important. So let's switch gears uh, for a moment. We talked a lot about your village. Is there anybody particular that you would note as being one of your, your greatest inspirations or uh, supporters in, in this process? Because like people don't always, aren't always happy when you quit a job, but she knew this was something I really wanted to do. <laughs> And it was really just like a surprise. Like, that's really how it all started. Because I remember I came home, it probably was maybe like 8 o'clock. I think she just got home one day, and I was like, I quit my job. We got to do this right now. <laughs> and that's literally how it all started. And I was just like. My mom uh, jumped right on board. Did she jump right on yeah, board? she was she like, said, oh, did really you do right what? <laughs> and I was like, yeah, I'm done working at Target. I quit. I'm going to do Uber Eats, but we, we, we got to do this now. But from okay. day one, she was like, okay, this is what you want to do? Then I'll be there to help you. So she stopped her stuff I for a little bit. Would be the whole time. Mom was the was help help usher in the dream. I love it. I really shared it too. I have I I told you I have an impulsive personality and I go and I remember when I left corporate America, my mother was like, You're doing what? <laughs> but she has been one of my greatest inspirations and supporters. Is nothing like it. I, I tell people all the time, there's not a person on earth that loves me more than that woman. And she is on the ride with me. She will call me on my stuff when it's not right. So I, I think that's a really uh, beautiful thing. So when it comes to being a visionary, what do you think are some important things that help or aid someone in bringing that vision to a reality? Definitely still a well laid out. Okay. Have an idea of what you want to do and knowing of how to execute it. Like, even if you don't okay. want to exactly execute that plan, at least know mm -hmm. what avenues to look at to help you be able mm -hmm. to execute that. Whether it's a book you need to read or a person that you need to talk to to be like, hey, I don't really know how to get this budget or get this grant. Some people will just talk, just talk to certain people and they'll be able to tell you, like, okay, you got to go this way to get this loan or you need this grant so you don't got to pay it back in the long run just so you can be able okay. to get something to, uh, to go. And also, mm -hmm. I would say have the drive and determination because that, that really is what, what I would say that those are probably the two main things, having a drive and determination. Because to survive or just even be an entrepreneur, it's going to come to up and downs. And it's always good to have the ups. But if the, mm -hmm. the downs too bad, they crush you, then you're not going to be able to survive the ups either. So it's like you got to take, you got to take it, you got to you gotta be able to take both of them for, for, and know how to manage the ups and downs to know it's, mm -hmm. it can change at any time. But know that no matter what you do, you just can't give up. Because the moment you okay. feel like you give up and you defeat it, that drive and determination goes right down with it. Mm -hmm. So I'd say definitely the drive and determination to want to be able to succeed and to, to continue to strive because it's, it's, it's going to be hard. If you can really strive through it and keep pressing and be determined, I don't think you can do anything. How do you find a balance in being an entrepreneur and I'm sure sometimes feeling like everything is resting on your shoulders and finding your own time for families to hang out, your own self-care, relaxation. Is that is that a hard balance? Is that something you fight hard to do? What what has that been like for you? Um I can say it's it's not it's not easy. But okay. it can be it can be done. I'll say that. But it's, it has okay. to be a one. It's hard to not to want to work twenty four seven when it's your own business because you feel like it's like I gotta do this, I gotta do this, I gotta do this now. But what I learned mm -hmm. was like I was burning myself out so I had to take breaks. Like right now I'm at okay. bread. So on Monday to Tuesdays, those are my appointment holy <laughs> days. So I go I to cafes and I do my work in there just to so I'm not in the house, I'm not in my cramp of my store where it's like okay. I just work twenty four seven. We're here, so I'm around other people, I talk with someone else. Where it's like sometimes you just need that to um that, that release where it's like, okay, I'm not I'm working, but okay. I'm not my whole mindset right now is like, okay, I can chill, relax for a moment where it's not like, okay, I need to be right here, right now. Where it's like it's not so much pressure on you, and also mm -hmm. take take breaks, do the things you like to do. Don't forget the things you like to do, um, whether it's fishing, riding bikes, going to the gym. Try to take as much me time you can, even if you do get off at nine o'clock. Some restaurants are still open. Go take yourself out. 
you have to remember to do the small things because when you get lost and then like working, you know, managing your business, you, you lose yourself sometimes or you can't lose mm-hmm. yourself where it's like, I need to do this 24 seven, but really you don't need to go that hard all the time. Like not saying you don't need to go hard, but you can take a step back sometimes and get a break and relax. Cause I'm, I'm a, I'm a workaholic myself where it's like, I just want to work 24 seven, but it's like, I realize I'm just burning yourself out. And at the end of the day, you're like, dang, it's only six o'clock. I'm tired. Or you just realize, like, hey, I don't mm-hmm. feel as happy right now. And that's when you really, okay, yeah. I got to start doing the things I really like to do. Yeah, I love my business, but it's like, my, this, this, it brings me joy, but it may not mm-hmm. bring you the same joy as, like, let's say, riding a bike or going to the gym or chilling with your homies or going out to eat. Like, that's a different type of joy where it's, okay, I know my business right. good, but what about yourself? Right. So I right. think definitely take time to yourself. I had a, a, a friend that lost her a father recently and i was having a conversation with her and another friend and she said uh one thing that someone said at the service was there are two things that are certain in life right you're going to have a start date (laughs) and you're going to have an end date but it's important what you do with that dash in between and so i feel like what you just said really speaks to to the heart of that your dash it's it's wonderful to make a mark and and do things and, and leave a trail but it's also like you don't know when that end year is coming, right? And so you do and find joy in your dash. Because for a lot of entrepreneurs, there is joy in the work that you do. Because a lot of people are working in their passions and their purpose and the things that they love. But like you said, it still can be work. <laughs> yeah. It's stressful. And so I, I like the notion of being able to know that there's a balance to that. And, I, and I'm very proud of you. Uh, for knowing that now and recognizing that I'm believing it's going to prove to be very beneficial for you. Before we get out here today, I know that you shared with me that there was a promotion that you wanted to share uh, with our listeners. We're having a party special private rent out, which is $2,000 with a $500 deposit down payment. And it can lock you in for those four hours and you get to have up to 200 people. And we cover the tables, chairs, so you get access to the entire self museum to yourself. You can bring a DJ, food, drinks, have it cater, even an open bar, and have as much fun as you want to. We love it. Thank you. Well, I have enjoyed chatting with you. So let's cheers it up to this visionary sip. Thank you so much for joining me. Cheers. Cheers. Well, there you have it. Another episode, another visionary sip completed. I just want to thank our guest today. I am extremely inspired by this young man, uh, the path that he is blazing for himself. I hope that we all took some good nuggets and gems from today. It doesn't matter what our age is, where we are at in life. If you have a vision and something that you want to do, it is up to you to see it through. Remember, life is too short for bad vibes and bad drinks. So keep sipping, keep chatting, and always remember, life is a journey, but it's better with a sip and a chat. Until next time, cheers. Thank you, Sippers, for joining the Sip Podcast, where we sip, eat, talk. If you've enjoyed our flavorful conversations, don't miss out on future episodes. Subscribe now and follow us on Instagram at YouTube at Sip, Eat, Talk Podcast. Let's continue to sip, eat, and talk together. Until next time, cheers.